With over one billion adherents worldwide, Hinduism today represents one-seventh of the world's population. Known as the oldest religion on our planet, and it's referred to as a faith which represents a way of life and is rich and deep-rooted in beliefs, culture, heritage, and its core values. Please join with me in welcoming His Holiness Swami Brahma Viharidis, the religious leader of BAPS Hindu Mandir Abu Dhabi, to talk with us about the importance of strengthening interfaith as a catalyst for global outreach. Your Holiness. Om Shantihi 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 With these cosmic prayers for peace, I would like to personally thank all of you for being here this morning. Respected and revered, national, political, and most importantly, spiritual leaders who have gathered not just because they have been invited, because we have a fire burning in our hearts that harmony, interfaith dialogue is not just a need, it is a most important ingredient for the survival of human race. As we begin, I would like to first tell you that the topic of my talk, Interfaith as a Catalyst for Global Outreach, would be explored in just three ways. First, the why. Second, the how. And third, the what. Why interfaith harmony works and how interfaith harmony helps and what serious interfaith harmony can contribute to the world. Initially, I would like to remind and remember all of us that the International Day of Tolerance has been dedicated and founded on the 125th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi in 1995. Mahatma Gandhi specifically said that intolerance is the religion of the negative. As a Hindu, we have grown up on the ideals of Vasudheva Kutumbakam, the whole world is one family. The ideal of Yatra Vishwam Bhavati Ekanidam, the whole world is one giant nest. We may be birds of different flights and different feathers, but at the end of the day, we have to come back to the same nest. We have to live together. There is a choice before us. Either we flourish together as a human race, or either we perish forever with disgrace. Most importantly, this universal value of global harmony is not just limited or a prerogative of one religion. Explore the world and we find out that every religion, every culture, every community, every heart and every home believes in global harmony. But most of the time, tolerance, harmony, are nouns, beautiful, loaded with meaning. A time has come when we need to turn these nouns into active verbs. In the words of the founder of this nation, His Highness Sheikh Zayed, he did not say that tolerance is beauty, but he did say tolerance is a duty. We need to turn all these beautiful ideas into verbs that really bring a change. And we need to also understand that without personal transformation, there can never be global transformation. We must live what we believe in, 
and must live what we really love. This beautiful small story of the boy and the map of the world will succinctly explain what I mean to say. Once there was a man, he was completely absorbed in reading a magazine. While his son kept constantly pestering and disturbing him, in order to occupy his son, he ripped out one page from the magazine on which there was a map of the world printed. He gave that map to the boy and asked him to study it. For 10 minutes, the boy studied that map of the world. The father then took a pair of scissors and cut that map in 20 pieces. He gave those pieces to his son, hoping that it would take him at least three to four hours to piece the jigsaw together. To his shock and surprise, his son came back in a matter of minutes, fixing the entire world together. When asked, how could you arrange the map of the world so quickly? The boy said, Dad, I never did arrange the map of the world. When you gave me the map of the world, I turned the page over. Behind it was an image of a human being. All I did was arrange the image of the human being. The world came together on its own. I am glad that it was mentioned that once again, COVID has compelled us to focus on the human being. And this brings me to my first question. Why interfaith harmony works? Because scientists and behavioral experts tell us that for the well-being of the world, we must focus on the well-being of a person. It also tells us that our being is shaped by our behavior. And our behavior is dictated by our beliefs. The set of beliefs you and I have will create a world vision which we would want to see. So when we talk about a world of beliefs, perhaps no other forces apart from religion, religious leaders and values can penetrate the world of beliefs in such a way. Perhaps a time has come where we need to re-examine the values and bring those back in all the fields available. What do I mean by that? That of course, beliefs and values dominate our minds. But more importantly, can we bring them to the forefront of life? When we talk about belief, it's our belief in God, our belief in prayers, our belief in love and faith. Just to give you a reconfirmation of what I am saying, it was almost 70 years ago that one of the most famous scientists, Charles Steinmetz, the wizard of electricity, when he was asked that in 50 years to come, in which lines do you think there will be the greatest progress? Charles Steinmetz, not a religious man, he himself many times doubted God. Charles Steinmetz says that in 50 years to come, men and women will realize that material things do not bring happiness. And when that day comes, the scientists will turn the laboratories onto the study of God, prayer, and the spiritual forces. And when that day comes, we shall see more advancement in one generation than we have seen in the past four. This is what I mean by catalyst. If spiritual forces re-strengthening our spiritual values and interfaith harmony can create greater progress in every field, they have the power to be civilizational. Now, the second idea, how can interfaith harmony really help? We do not have to go back in past so many years. 
during the COVID times, the pandemic, when some of the strongest nations on this earth were struggling. The most powerful leaders were uncertain because we were facing a time of abnormalcy. Everything we knew about society had to be set aside. At a time of lockdowns, quarantine, social distancing, if you loved somebody, stay away. At a time where we never really imagined that we would have to be wearing masks. At that time, world leaders did turn to religious leaders. And it was wise that they used the power of spiritual connectivity to create trust in the people so that the world could save itself. We have found that interfaith connectivity helps in social causes. WHO acknowledges the fact that the role of faith-based institutions, faith-based communities, and leaders of spirituality were perhaps more successful in setting an example of all the norms which were more challenging for political leaders. Not only that, they have quoted in one of their reports, and that report says that the followers of these faith trusted religious leaders more than sometimes even the government and health departments. One survey conducted by Pew it says, it's very surprising, that 61% of the people decided to be vaccinated because their spiritual leaders said so. We must understand that we are not just a physical or an economic or not just a developmental society. We are basically society of faith and spirituality. When we understand that, we also realize that spiritual connectivity is a catalyst for global outreach. How? Let me explain. In 1984, when our spiritual leader met His Holiness the Pope in Vatican, and when they were asked that what is the reason that spiritual leaders meet, the answer was when two religious leaders meet, it lessens the bitterness amongst the followers. It generates mutual understanding. It generates respect. We wanted to say that most important fact is it's not limited just to a country or a place. Let's understand the fact that these leaders have followers across countries, across places, respect across communities. One picture of religious leaders meeting. One word of their dialogue can set a chain reaction of harmony everywhere. Do not underestimate the power of one such visual or one such dialogue. I wanted to re-emphasize that whenever religious leaders meet, even as somebody pointed out, that even a small conference when we meet, not only the followers change, but even the religious leaders change. We must understand the dialogue we have amongst ourselves should be the same dialogue we have amongst our followers and should be the same dialogue we have within our own heart. We cannot say something else in public. We cannot say something else in private. And we cannot feel something else. The alignment of spiritual leaders into one arena and the followers can create that magic. But Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, the most loved president of India, he pointed out something that also changed my vision. He said, religious leaders are much more than the leaders of their own followers. I think it's something that we should really think about. He said, each religion is beautiful like an orchard, complete. But unfortunately, religions are like an archipelago, islands, beautiful but disconnected. 
Real religious leaders are not those who only inspire their own followers. Real religious leaders are those who generate bridge between the islands that are separate. Our role as religious leaders in one way or another should bring not just religions closer together, but should bring our followers closer together to each other. But how can that be possible? Not just by preaching or teaching. Remember, just as God watches over all of us, our followers watch all of us. The acts of a religious leader, they should be inspiring. As His Excellency Sheikh Nayan mentioned when Bishop Paul was moving, and he mentioned that, are you going to say the prayers for us today? Exactly. An idea that he gave is inspired a small incident that I visioned. In 1999, when Our Holiness, His Pramukh Swami Maharaj, he visited Israel. I was with him. But he did not just visit the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem. He sat and prayed there. He did not just visit the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. When he saw people folding pieces of paper and putting them in crevices, he asked, what are people doing? Somebody explained that prayers are written by the Jewish people and they are placed in those crevices as a form of prayer. His Holiness Pramukh Swami, to my surprise, he took two flowers, one flower, he placed and sat in prayer. The other flower he placed and sat in prayer. When we asked, what were you doing praying at a holy place of some another religion? Do you know what he said? He said, my first prayer was that may all the prayers which have been said in the past, may they be answered by God. And the second prayer? May all the prayers which are said from henceforth in the future, may they be answered as well. When religious leaders act in a way that increases the importance of holy places and scriptures of other religions, it generates a dynamic feeling. And lastly, I would like to ask, most importantly, what can faith and interfaith harmony do for the world? Well, you do not have to go far. I want to emphasize all your holinesses and the eminences and all the people who genuinely love us that remember nothing is small on this earth and nothing is too big on this earth. Remember, an act of terror anywhere hurts humanity everywhere. And an act of harmony anywhere helps humanity everywhere. Our experience in this land of tolerance, the UAE, imagine His Highness the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, he gifted free land to build a Hindu temple. A Muslim king giving land to a Hindu temple where our lead architect is a Christian Catholic, where our main consultant is a Chinese of no religion, where our project director was a Sikh of another religion, where our structural engineer is a Buddhist, Mr. Kong, where our contractors are Parsis, and where our chairman of the trust comes from a Jain tradition, I want to ask where can there be such a combination of people working voluntarily in charity to create a spiritual oasis for global harmony? It can happen in UAE. In this place, there are not just global meets, there are global heartbeats. I have experienced that heartbeat of tolerance and harmony. I only request if simple lay followers can get together to create such a wonderful once in a millennium place for global harmony. When 
religious leaders get together, when we begin to dream the same dream, in the same sequence, for the same rhythm, in the same reason, I believe the core of spirituality together can change the core of humanity. Of course, it's not just a catalyst. It has the power to produce a worldwide web, nope, bigger than that, a cosmic web of faith will protect all of us. That's, let us pray that we walk in that same path. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Holiness, for sharing with us a rich portrayal of the strategic importance of en enacting human core values in everything we aspire to achieve as human beings. Thank you very much.